So in this video we'll go through a little bit of applied regression analysis in Excel. We will estimate a multiple regression, uh, look at some parameters and um, see where the important information in the regression output is. The data we are using here is one which we observe, which we obtained from the amazing gapminder.org web page. Certainly worth having a look at that web page. The type of data we have here is we're having for countries, the countries we know their names and the geo ideas, we also know their land area, their population, their health expenditure, their GDP per capita, and their annual CO2 emissions. So the first thing, when you're working with Excel, because some things you can't sort of undo in Excel, when you're doing empirical work, if this is your original data file, save this file as a different file. So I'll just save it as, let's say version two. Here we go. That means you can always return to your original data. This is a very, very important step, especially if you spend some time creating that data set which you're using. So then let's see, actually, let me get rid of a couple of columns. On this occasion, um, we will not use these country codes. Let's get rid of them. And on this occasion, we will also not use the health expenditure. So here we have some data. And let's think about what we, what we want to do, what type of model we will want to estimate here. The model we, we are going to estimate is one which tries to explain the amount of emissions, ex variation in the amount of per capita emissions by country. So we'll want to explain, CO, let's call it CO2PC, that's per capita emission, as a linear function. So we're having alpha plus beta 1 times, and the first explanatory variable, we'll use that GDP per capita variable. GDP per capita plus a second variable so beta 2 times a second variable and the variable we will want to use is population density and then we will have an arrow term. Now this variable here we already have GDP per capita here uh, that's this variable. CO2 per capita we don't have we have the overall emissions and we have the population that means we can calculate this variable by taking that value and dividing by the population so that will be the first thing we will be doing and population density we again don't have that directly as a variable but we have the population we have the land area we divide population by the land area we will get a measure of the population density so let's do the, the first two steps we'll have to do and calculate the two variables which we need. Let me include some extra columns here and let's say that here we want to calculate CO2 per capita. And what we will now do is calculate the emissions divided by the population. Now in San Marino we don't have any emissions so that will be a missing piece of observation as our country names but for the rest we'll do that. So let's say for the Seychelles we've taken the annual emissions and divided by the population. So this is tons per person. Then we also want, so it's good in Excel to, um, to organize your data according to the columns how you're going to use them your y variable and then your explanatory variables the order of the explanatory variables doesn't really matter but they should be in columns next to each other to make our life easy source here so what we want here is gdp per capita and then we want population density so GDP per capita we already have, so let me just copy that from, from across here. And we can copy it down. And then population density, we said we'll take population and the, we divide by the land area, which is measured in square kilometers. So that is a measure that's people per square kilometer. All right. 
so in some sense we're almost there we let's try actually to run a regression now we'll go to data our trusted data analysis part regression um, we want our independent variable that's going to be our co2 per capita variable then our explanatory variables we put them in columns next to each other so we can highlight them together they're here I highlighted the um, the titles of the columns so I have to have this labels one ticked and then output oh, where shall we put this we'll just put it I'll put it here so let's click OK so what we get is an error message in Excel and I'll show you that because you may well get the same in different examples. Input range contains non-numeric data. So click OK, click Cancel here, Cancel here, and you can see here, for instance, these missing observations. These are not numbers, and Excel needs numbers to run regression. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete the rows with missing observations. So this is another reason why you want to make sure that you're doing this in not in your original data file so we highlight all columns and that's important highlight all the columns with data we sort we'll first sort by co2 per capita emissions we'll do that here and then if you go to the end of the table and see there are two observations and marino and monaco for which we don't have co2 emissions so we'll delete these two rows Next, we'll again highlight the entire table. We sort, but this time we sort by GDP per capita. We'll go to the end of the table and see whether there are missing observations. Yeah, there's a whole bunch, seven of them. So for some reason, for this set of countries, we don't have data, so we'll delete it from the spreadsheet. You still have the data in the original spreadsheet. And then we highlight everything again, we sort, and this time by population density to make sure that there's not another missing observation, but we have all the data. Oh, so what has happened here? Because the CO2, uh, let me delete that from here, and we just draw it back up here. two per capita. Here we go. Now we should be able to run our regression. Let's see how many observations have we got. 174. Last one is in row 175. So we'll go to data, data analysis, regression. It still has the information from before. So all we need to change is how far our data set goes. Goes to row 175. Everything else can stay. And here we have our regression output. So let me just increase that a little bit. Such that we can focus on what we learn from this. Here we go. It's still see our model and our regression output. Let's start with the most obvious thing you will be looking for when you look at a regression. This is our population regression up here. Okay, that was the population regression and of course we do not know these coefficients alpha, beta 1 and beta 2. But these are the ones we are interested in. We do not know them. So in our sample, we estimate a sample line of best fit, and that will be basically the CO2 per capita, but the estimated value, so hat, is going to be equal to A plus B1 GDP per capita plus B2 population density. And since we're using the estimated value, we don't have an error here. That is the line of best fit from a sample. Best fit from our sample. So that is from our particular sample here. 
here we go. Where are our coefficients? A is estimated here, so this is A. This is B1. This is B2. So these are our coefficient estimates. Then we have standard errors for each of those. They are in this next column, the standard error column. They are here. Then we have the T statistics and the P value. They, are, they all relate to a hypothesis test which looks like this. For instance, for beta 1. Beta 1 equals 0 is the null hypothesis and the alternative is that beta 1 is unequal to 0. And we can see here we're having an R squared calculated of around a third, 33%. That's our R squared values. We still have something else, but over here we have confidence intervals. See that very well. So here's a confidence interval for the constant, here's a confidence interval for um, the beta 2 coefficient. All right, so let's see what we get in our particular example. You can see that we get two coefficients here which are very significant. Let me highlight those in yellow. That's this coefficient. You see we have a very small p-value and this is this coefficient. We have a very small p-value. So what does that mean here? we have the constant is typically very difficult or impossible to interpret we would have to basically what you do is the, the meaning of that is what happens to co2 emissions if we set both explanatory variable to zero but that doesn't make sense there is no country with zero gdp per capita and a zero population density it just doesn't exist so let's not worry interpret the intercept what about this value of B1, which is 0 0.0015. So what's the meaning of this coefficient? In the first instance, it means that if we think about increasing the dependent variable value, which in our case here is GDP per capita, by one unit, that would be one dollar. Remember, you need now need to know how is this measured. That's measured in US dollars per capita. So if we increase GDP per capita by one dollar, to how much on average increase in CO2 emissions is that associated? So one dollar is associated to so if gdp increased by one dollar you'd interpret that as co2 emissions increasing by 0 0.000 approximately two tons per person per year okay so that doesn't seem a lot i actually know how much uh, how much that is so let's um think about perhaps slightly more sensible units here if we thought about increasing GDP by a thousand dollars a year per person that would relate to 0.2 tons an increase by 0.2 tons CO2 emissions per capita per year now 0.2 tons that is about the equivalent think about you may have a 20 year old battered Volkswagen Beetle if you travel with that around seven to eight hundred kilometers that will emit 0.2 tons of CO2 so but remember that's per person that means on average as a country gets richer by a thousand pounds a year that country emits more per capita and that's 0.2 tons and that's the equivalent of each person in that country making an additional seven to eight hundred uh, kilometer journey in their old Volkswagen Beetle. What about if 
the GDP increased by 10,000 and that is perhaps to just to give that a bit of perspective so we can perhaps see so Argentina has GDP of around 12 12,000 um, per per person is perhaps best if we sort this by GDP per capita to make sense of that okay so we had well, was Argentina that was around here it was here okay had around 12,000 so an extra 10,000 that goes to 22 who have we got here approximately Czechia or Greece okay so going from Argentina average income to Greece's average income that is then the equivalent of if we multiply this by 10,000 we would multiply this by 10,000 we get around two tons okay or actually if you multiply that by 10,000 it's like 1.6 tons but I rounded here to 0.002 so let's say around two tons now two tons that is about the emissions for an economy class flight return flight from Manchester to Chicago okay so that means on average as countries get $10,000 richer they emit more to the tune of every single citizen in that country making one extra return flight from Manchester to Chicago so this is what you learn from this sort of statistic it is purely a descriptive statistic a measure of the correlation between GDP per capita and CO2 emissions it is by no means a causal statement just regression analysis by itself cannot give you that so we can see also here that population density doesn't seem to play an obvious role in a linear regression that doesn't seem to be a linear relationship because we have a very very large p-value okay very small coefficient very large p-value so that doesn't seem to be significant statistically significant so what we finish with and that is usually something that's Perhaps better to start with is by actually plotting looking at the data so what we will do is we will uh, plot a chart co2 emissions and GDP so what you see here is on the um, so we're having co2 emissions per capita that is on the horizontal axis and we're having GDP per capita on the um, on the vertical axis and you can see there seems to be some linear relationship okay but we can also see that there's a lot of variation in this relationship this of course is illustrated by the fact that our regression explains a fair bit of variation in co2 but a fair bit of explained uh, of variation two-thirds of it in fact remains unexplained by this regression